So you know how sometimes you want to do some work and you convince yourself that everything is going to go exactly the way you want it, even if you don't do anything even remotely close to what the instructions say on the materials you're using. And you also know that what you're doing isn't exactly right. Well, this is one of those times and one of those examples. Enjoy. Some days, everything goes right. Other days, things don't go so right. And you realize that you have to make some major repairs. Now, I noticed when I was building my table in my trailer that uh, there were some water streaks that were starting to come down the wall. So I started investigating and I don't really have the greatest eyes and I got up on the ladder and noticed all these cracks that are forming on it and realized that water's leaking into the trailer. So now I'm gonna be repairing these cracks and I'm gonna try and show you guys how I did it. There's a bunch of different products that you can use but things, basically we're just trying to seal it up and make it look okay because you're not really gonna see it anyway. So I'm gonna start out with using some glass cleaner and try and clean this and I don't want to use degreaser on it because it could melt the plastic. So, spray it on. It doesn't come exactly perfectly clean, but it'll get most of it off and then I'm gonna run over it with the uh, 240 grid on the orbital sander after. Well, I had a bit of a change of plans by the time I start assess the damage after I cleaned it and looked at it. I'm going straight to 60 grit and my air hose won't reach out here, so I'm gonna use my woodworking jitterbug. And uh, I'm just gonna prep it just so that I can put some uh, plastic uh, weld on top of it and uh, see how far we can get today. Hopefully it doesn't rain while we're working. Now that I've got that prepped, I'm going to uh, use our JB Weld Plastic Weld Repair Epoxy Putty and uh, get it out. I don my PPE, knead it together until it's a uniform color and kind of push it in and flow it out over the edges. And I'll come back later on with the orbital and uh, sand it out just to rough it up a little bit and then uh, we'll spray it with some, uh, some white spray paint. Grab my crappy scissors. Oh, Not exactly what I would call ideal, but this is the first time I've used this product, so. is uh, going to be a little interesting. Well, hopefully this works. Not everything works out. But we do our best and hope it does. Alright, that's getting hot and it looks pretty uniform to me. So I have to say this isn't the greatest product I've ever used, but we'll see how it goes because I was trying to fill some pretty big gaps with it and some of the uh, stuff was pushing in when I was doing it. I'll show you what's going on with it. I may end up having to uh, come back and use some body fill on some of this stuff. But hopefully it leaves some strength there. A bit of an experiment. Don't think I'm really ever gonna use this stuff again. There's some better stuff. This commercial grade stuff that I can buy. But towards the end, I was also learning how to use it a little bit. So I found that with the cracks, if I kind of like rolled it up like Play-Doh, and then sort of pushed it in as I was feeding the 
um, putty into the crock. It seemed to work a little bit better, but I'll give it three hours to dry and then I'll start sanding it. So even though I wasn't a big fan of uh, how this applied, I found that this stuff actually sands off pretty nice. So I'm going to finish it off and sort of leave a little bit on there for strength and finish it with some uh, polyester putty and hopefully it'll look okay from there. Then I can uh, prime it, seal everything off with steam sealer and give it a blast of white spray paint. Alright, now that I've got that sanded down, we're going to mix up some body filler, apply our body filler, sand it, and it should be good to prime after that. Alright, now that we've got all our cracks filled, time for some Bondo. All right, now that uh, I've got most of this sorted out, you can see that there's still some cracks that are in there, but a lot of the point of this was to try and give a little bit of strength to it. Now I'm gonna try and put an impermeable membrane on it, and I'm going to use uh, some Rust-Oleum leak seal on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around, hit everything that's still cracked, give it a, just so it gets a couple extra coats, anything that's kinda got ragged edges on it, I finished everything by uh, hitting it all with some 220 grit, hand sanded it so it gives us something to stick to. Now normally if we're doing body work, you want to go back and anything that's got body filler on it and prime it, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hit it with a couple extra coats and really get a nice thick layer of uh, the plasticized uh, rubber and permeable membrane, whatever you want to call it on there, and uh, we'll go from there. The Rust-Oleum really wasn't working out for me. There were a number of factors to this. The weather was fairly cold and there was a lot of wind so I was putting it on thicker than recommended, especially over the cracks. I also didn't wait the half hour you're supposed to between coats. I mean, who really has time for that anyway? Once it started to tack up, I hit most of it with a full can of rubberized undercoating to really seal it in. This is going to have to wait until spring to fix this with a more permanent solution. With the amount of time I spent on this, I could have used the fancy metal shaping tools in my garage and made a nice shiny panel out of stainless and fixed it properly. Be sure to check out all the other great content that's on my channel. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I always try to get back. And check me out on Instagram, Magna Machine Works. One word.